I really want to go wild camping again when lockdown restrictions are lifted, but I don't even own a tent at the moment. So I went on a quest to find a good affordable tent setup for wild camping in Scotland. Researching tents and selecting the right one was an interesting and long journey for me. I want to share the things I learned from doing this a bit too thoroughly with you. The first thing is deciding what the criteria of the tent are. I've put them all on screen here and will explain the most important ones. A two person tent is perfect for two people, but also as a solo tent. Two entrances is nice, but what is more important to me is a decent sized vestibule, which would allow cooking while it's raining. Very important in Scotland. A double layer tent is also much better against condensation, so is a must for me. I think it should be easy enough to get a tent under 2.5 kilograms. I've set the price range from 50 to 70 pounds and I hope the tents in this price range are a little better than supermarket tents. I guess we're gonna find that out now. It was a great time looking at tents at Photoshop backgrounds. Although you did have to watch out for some hose pipes pretending to be tents. All in all, it didn't take me too long to skim through 62 tabs of Amazon tents and find the best ones. <laughs> the tents don't look that amazing. Almost all of them have very weird reviews ranging from people being really happy with them to people hating them and returning them after one day. Some are even apparently smelly and some just don't have enough reviews to trust them at all. And I feel like at this price range I do want something that just seems to be good also review wise but that just doesn't seem to happen on Amazon so far. So even though a tent could have 4 out of 5 stars, the bad reviews make me not trust the tent. I did went ahead and select the 3 best tents in this range. All these tents have enough reviews to slightly trust them, um, but they also have a fair bit of negative comments on them. So if you feel like taking a risk, go for it. So I continued my quest on Amazon and increased the price range from 70 to 100 pounds just to see if it got any better. Do the reviews got better? Do the tents maybe get lighter and better? Who knows? So I gathered about a million tents again in this price range and went through them all. Same story, I added them to a spreadsheet and looked at which tent was going to be the best. Well, well, it actually got slightly better, very slightly. With the increase in the price range, we have gotten into the range of some real lightweight tents, like ultra light. One tent claiming 1.3 kilos. With only five reviews that don't look great. I've added some tents just over 100 pounds because I thought they were worth adding to this list. There were still only a few tents that had enough reviews to slightly feel confident in buying them. But again, these reviews ranged from very shit to maybe good. I've selected the best three tents in my opinion again. So here we go. The number three looks pretty decent in both weight and build. But again, some people are really happy with it and others not so much. For me, this tent doesn't really have the right shape or vestibule size. Since it's a very small total tent, it's super low. It's just not really something for me. The number two looks a lot better shape wise. The weight is pretty normal though. But still, I would expect the reviews to not have the same amount of bad reviews as in the 50 pound range. The number one seems to have all I want. The size could be a bit small for two persons, but that's almost always the case with a two person tent. The weight is nice and the shape looks really good, but just as any tent I've seen on Amazon, the reviews are just very, very confusing. There are plenty of concerning one star reviews, but also people who have been using it many years and seem to be really happy with it. This is where it kind of got complicated for me. Because the best tent on Amazon in the 70 to 100 pound range does seem like a good option for me. But I would still just have to hope that the bad reviews are just nonsensical. I already upped the price range as well and the reason why I wanted to stay low budget on Amazon is because you still are ordering from Amazon at the end of the day so returning policies are going to be a pain in the butthole. At this point as if it was meant to be I found out that the outdoor shops here in the city are actually open. It's the first day after lockdown they have been open so it's kind of a coincidence. But this meant I could go to an actual shop and look at tents, compare them and know that I would just be able to return it without any problem. So I decided to go to the outdoor shop before committing on buying a tent from Amazon. Let's see how fruitful that trip was.
The Auto Shop had two tents in particular that caught my attention. The first one was the OEX Fox 2. It was discounted at £75, which looked amazing, and it was 2.1 kilograms. The other tent was the Vango Nova 200, also discounted and selling at £89. The tent itself is bigger than the Fox and has a good sized vestibule, much bigger than the Fox and any tent I've seen on Amazon. The Nova 200 weighs 2.5 kilos, so it's slightly heavier but still within range. Everything started to look more positive, and even the reviews weren't horrendous this time. So in the end, I decided to go for the Vango Nova 200. It seemed to tick all the boxes and at the discounted price, I just had to go for it. So there it is, the Vango Nova 200. We just put up the tent, which was fairly simple. Uh, it's really nice shape and it looks really good. We just sat in it together and it also looks big enough for two people. A little small, but that's always the case and definitely big enough for one person, of course. Uh, it's really nice, you can put up the outer tent and the inner tent together, which is going to be real nice when it's raining. Vestibule size also looks super big. Um, I'm really excited to use it at Real Adventures. However, this one does have a hole in the inner tent, which is a big disappointment. But because we bought it at an outdoor shop, we should be able to return it easily under its warranty and get a replacement. That just shows that even though you buy a tent with good reviews and a nice brand, it can still go wrong and you just want to be able to return it easily and get your replacement so it doesn't delay your adventures, uh, which is exactly what I will be needing to do. Be sure you check all the links in the descriptions of the spreadsheets and all the tents I've been looking at. And I will see you in the next video.